Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Hope you're having a fantastic day. So welcome to our tutorial on Primavera P6 where we'll be diving into uh, important concepts, a concept of retain logic and uh, progress override. Okay, so these are crucial aspect of project scheduling and management that can significantly impact the way your project timelines are structured and modified during the course of the, um, the project. Okay. So understanding this concept is essential for effective planning and uh, project execution. All right. So let's go into the uh, definition. Um, retain logic, you know, as the name implies, you're retaining the logic. Okay. So this refers to the scheduling method in Primavera P6, where the original log logic or the sequence of activity is retained. Okay. Even when they are delays. So if even if there's a delay on your project, you know, the original logic will still be maintained. So in simple terms, if an activity is delayed, all its dependent activities, that's all the successor, okay, will also be shifted accordingly to exp to, res um, to respect the initial logic and sequence uh, that was planned, all right? So, but on the other hand, you know, uh, progress override, just like the name implies, you know, you're overriding the initial planned um, progress, okay? So, um, it allows the schedule to disregard the original sequence when an activity is updated um, with progress. Okay. So, this means if an activity starts earlier or later than planned, its successor can start as part of the revised schedule without waiting for the predecessor to complete as originally planned. Okay. So, let's say this is your day to date. Okay. And you have um, activity A. Let's say you have activity A here, and you have activity B, and you have activity C. So this is routine logic. So you have a finish to start relationship between A to B and B to C. So what that means is that um, when A finishes, that's when B can start, okay? And C, we have to wait for uh, B to be completed before it starts. So um, that's your, let's say that's our normal you know, logic. So now let's uh, consider another scenario whereby, you know, actually A has not started, but B has started. So what will happen in the program when you update your program is that the part of B that has started will be on the left hand side of the data date, whereas the remaining, remaining part of B will still respect the logic between itself and A. Okay. So let's say B, this is B2 and this is B1. All right. Then C will still follow activity um, B. All right. So it's retaining the logic. Even though B has started, the logic between A and B will still be respected. All right. So the other hand, let's consider the same scenario. Activity A, activity B, and activity C. All right. A b c so in this case now let's say we are using progress override in p6 so um when activity a let's say assume activity a has not started okay but in this case now activity b has started so what will happen now is that um, the logic will not be respected anymore so the progress will be override so let's say this is part of b that has started so in this case this is b1 and this is b2 so this is the remaining part of B that's yet to be completed. What happened to C? Still, C will follow that logic between B and C. Okay. So this is out of sequence um, activities. So B is not respecting the logic between itself and A anymore. And C will follow activity B. So um, if you ask yourself that question between retain logic and progress override, which one do you think will have a longer duration on your project? Definitely retain logic because retain logic will actually still re uh, retain the logic, but progress override will not retain that logic. But there will be an issue, especially when you have the same resources working on activity A and activity B. So in this case now, it will be showing that you need the resource at the same time. Okay. So you might experience a resource over allocation where you, you know, uh, plot your histogram. All right. So now let's jump into P6 and see how uh, this works. So now I have this um, set of activities, uh, these 10 activities in the program. Um, you, as you can see, the red activities are activities on the critical part, okay? 
and this activity is the activity that has um, a free float all right so it's not on the critical part it's called a float actually let me bring up the um the total float and the free float column okay so as you can see this activity resource allocation it has seven days of float okay in terms of free float and total float so in terms of free float it's saying that the uh, the duration of time you can delay this activity resource allocation without delaying the next activity is seven days okay so without delaying the successor the development phase is seven days so that means i can wait seven days without impacting this uh, development phase activity all right and the data flow is duration of time you can delay an activity without delaying the project end date okay so in this case it's same value all right so now um as you can see all these activities are finished to start all right so now let's say you know you've progressed your uh, your program and um ideally design phase should be completed before you start your uh, development phase so now let's check the scheduling option to make sure we are using the retain logic so in this case now we have a retain logic as our um, scheduling option okay so i'll close that so you see so now um let's say you know i'm progressing the um my project so let me just progress it now come back in a bit yeah so now guys as you can see so we've progressed our program um so we have design fit it's not complete okay we still have some activities you know to um to do there but look at this development phase all right so in this case now development phase is showing that actually it started so you can see some of the bars of development phase um is somewhere here whereby the uh, the other part is um is here so let me remove the uh the baseline bars so that um we can see what we are doing clearly so as you can see here so the design phase has started but it's not complete but development phase was meant to respect the logic it should not start up until design phase has been completed but in this case now because we've started part of the development phase which is this blue part on the left hand side of your day to date but the remaining part of um, development phase is still respecting the logic okay it's still respecting the logic so you you know it's showing that you, you need to finish design phase before you complete that so that's when you use um retain logic that's what retain logic gives here and it's showing that the project is finishing on the 15th of april so it's showing it will be showing a longer duration when you compare it to progress override so now let me apply progress override here and we'll see what will happen to this program so just look at um this development um phase and see what is happening there as you can see here the development phase now it's showing that it can continue even though you know we originally planned that we need to finish the design phase before we start the development phase and all the successor activities you know follow suit as well okay so in this case now it's not respecting the logic we're now out of sequence because we're not following the original sequence anymore so that's how retain logic and progress override works in primavera p6 if you have any question please leave it in the comments below and be sure to subscribe and like um, the video and so i will see you on the next one cheers